Hey guys, welcome to the FL Studio channel rack tutorial. Uh, this video is designed for both the novice user and the more advanced user. Uh, for the novice user, this serves as kind of a follow-up to my FL Studio uh, beginner's guide video, which I will link here. And I'm going to show you kind of how it works, all the controls and stuff like that. And for the advanced user, um, I hope to share with you some cool shortcuts and tips and tricks that you might not have known before. So let's get into it. So as usual, uh, F6 to bring it up and just a quick primer, you can left click to place a step, right click to delete a step. And we're just going to go over some of these controls so you guys have a good foundation of this thing. So starting here on the left, we've got the mute or solo button. And if you have data in here and you have it muted, you're not going to hear anything until you unmute. And you can also right click and hit solo and that will mute all the other channels except for that one. And then you can right click and hit solo again to revert their state. Up next we've got the panning knob and this will pan the sound uh, left or right. Then next to that we've got the input volume. And of course, all these controls, you can right click and reset, uh, create automation clips, all that jazz. And next to the input volume, we've got the mixer track number. This is the mixer track that the channel is assigned to. And then we have the actual channel itself. So when you click on this, you get all the channel properties. And this will, this will vary depending on what kind of channel it is. Um, if it's a synthesizer, this will look different. This is uh, FL Studio Sampler. So all of these are actually the sampler. Next up, we've got this little area here where this green highlight is, and this is where you select the samples. So when you want to do things like clone or delete channels, um, you can actually select it here in this little area. And you can uh, drag and select to select multiple, or I think if you double click, yeah, you can select them all. And then next, of course, we have our step sequencer. Um, and this view can actually be toggled by this button up here. So currently, this is the step sequencer view. If you hit this button up here, it changes to the piano roll view. And we're going to talk about the piano roll in another video because there's a lot of stuff to cover there. But uh, yep, that's how you toggle the view of these things. Next to that, we have the swing control. Now, the swing is an interesting one. Um, basically, how the swing works is it takes every even note that you have in the step sequencer and it shifts it up so it has a little bit of a delayed start let me show you uh how that works with that hi-hat so if we come down here and we fill this in i'm going to play this back without swing and then i'm going to gradually turn up the swing so you can hear its effect So that's kind of an easy way to add some quick groove to your beats. Um, and this swing control is the global. If you look in the top left, it says main swing. So what you can do is per channel, um, you can tell it, or is it swing, 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 Where is it? There you go. Uh, you can do you can turn up or down the swing mix so this will basically tell it how much you want it to be affected by the swing so if you if you want like just the hi-hats to be affected by the swing and not some other instrument just turn this down all the way on the other instrument moving right along uh, next up we've got the play pause button and this will basically let you preview the pattern as it is and I think the big difference between this button and using spacebar or the master play button is this will kind of pause um, and remember where you were when you paused it. So when you hit play again, it'll pick up from this spot. Whereas if you hit uh, spacebar again or play after hitting stop, it'll reset um, to the beginning of the playback. Next up, we got this little doohickey right here, and that lets you do some of this action if you so desire. It's kind of interesting. Next to that, we've got our filter groups, and we're going to talk about this in just a second. And then to the left of that, we've got the channel options drop down. So this kind of is where you do all the stuff you want to do with your channels. Um, if it's not available by right click on the channel itself, you should see it in this. It's kind of two different menus that deal with 
manipulating your channels and cloning them, deleting them, renaming them, etc. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. And last but not least, we have this plus button down here. And this is kind of a cool shorthand way to add a new channel to your rack. So this list here is basically all the generator plugins that you have installed within FL Studio. All right, let's talk about channels themselves and more specifically how you can customize the appearance of them. So if you right click on a channel and you click on rename color and icon, it'll give you this cool pop up here that basically gives you the power to do three things. Um, starting with the left, you can give it an icon. If you click on one of these, let's go with these nice tasty lips. Um, in this box, you can rename it to awesome kick. And then to the right here, this little weird shape right here, if you click on that, it'll let you change the color. So if I hit enter now, you'll see that we've got our new name, our icon, and the color. And I guess that's what this thing's for if your name is kind of long and it doesn't fit. Oh, and another thing you can do is it does give you these presets you can use. So if you're too lazy to do all that stuff, you can just click on this arrow right here and just click on like clap and that'll kind of color it, name it, and give it an icon for you. It's kind of a weird. It's more like a snap or a thumbs up, isn't it? What the fuck is that? Anyway, to clone a channel, you can right click on it and come down to clone, and that will do exactly that. It clones the channel and it pens a number two next to it, and if you do it again, it'll append number three, etc. Um, I like to use the shortcut uh, Alt-C, so if you highlight your channel and you hit alt c it'll do it and you can you can make a shit ton of those things to delete a channel you can right click on it come down to delete or a uh, shortcut alt del and i'm going to put all the shortcuts that i'm telling you guys in the description so that you can come back for reference um and you can also do this with uh, the multi-select so you can delete a whole bunch at once so i'm just going to select all these and do alt del and when you do this, um, be very careful when you're deleting channels as there is no undo. So it's going to ask you to confirm, are you sure you want to delete these channels? Uh, so hit OK if you are, and that'll, that'll permanently delete them from your project. Now this is really important because if you delete a channel on accident, you better have a save somewhere or you better know how to get that channel back and all the settings that you had in it. Um, otherwise it's gone. So just be careful with that. To change the order of these channels you can click and then hold alt and then go up and down with your arrow keys and that'll that'll reorder them in this view if you'd like to transpose the steps that you have in here by shifting them left to right you can do uh, control shift and then left and right with the arrow keys and that will just shift all the steps you know one step to the left one step to the right and then there's a little functionality called zipping. So if you want to hide a channel for whatever reason, you can do Alt Z and that will kind of zip it up in like this minified format. You know, if you don't want to see it anymore for whatever reason. And then if you right click on it again, it'll bring it back up. Let's talk about filter groups. So <clears throat> filter groups are a way that you can kind of group up your channels together so that you can only see the ones that you're interested in. Um, and the way you do that is if you come into this drop down here, um, by default, there's going to be an unsorted filter group. So anything that's not in a group is going to be in this group. So what you can do is you can select a bunch of channels that you want to group up with the multi select. And you can come over here and you go, you can go to group selected or shortcut alt G. So I'm going to hit alt G and I'm just going to call this uh, percussion. And what that does is it creates a group of channels um, that you can filter on. So now if I go back to unsorted, I'm only going to see the kick. If I go to my percussion group again, I only see those. If I want to see all the channels in my project, I can come up here to this all. And then if you select a filter group and right click, you can delete it, rename it, or add a new one as well up here. Finally, I want to show you guys something really cool that I just found out how to do after like 15 years of using this tool. And that is gradient colors on channels. So I've always seen them and I always wondered like, do people create these like in their spare time? Like how bored are people? But no, FL Studio can let you do that very easily. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to show all my channels here and select all of them. 
and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to color selected and gradient. And so the first color you pick is going to be, I guess, the one at the top. And then the second color you pick, as soon as you choose that one, is going to be, bam, the one at the bottom. And look at that. How cool is that? Well, that's it for this video. Um, I hope it helped you get sort of acquainted with the channel rack a little bit better if you weren't already. Um, if you were, I hope you learned like a shortcut or two or maybe a tip or a trick that you didn't know before. Um, if you found this video helpful in any way, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Um, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials or videos you'd like to see, uh, please leave that feedback as well. Otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next video.